Hello and welcome to my channel. My name is Hope Mess Tom and thank you so much for clicking on this video. Today we're going to be taking a look at some of my favorite eyeshadows that I think would satiate my need for this Makeup by Mario Ethereal Eyes palette. It's not quite a wet look shadow video but it's going to have a lot of it's, it's going to evoke a lot of those feelings because I wouldn't consider all of the shadows that I'm going to show you today to be wet look. But my goal here is to remind you, perhaps if you don't have the budget to buy the makeup by Mario or you like you were like, that's boring. I'm here to inspire you to look at your own collection and perhaps find things within your collection that can satiate the want for this, the desire for this. That's my hope in this video. If you are new to my channel, hi, welcome. My channel is mostly about loving my makeup collection as it currently is. This Makeup by Mario Ethereal Eyes palette was something that I picked up with my budget that I'm doing this year. And normally when I buy an eyeshadow palette, I like to compare it or try to dupe it out completely with my collection. I'm doing this video in lieu of that. I normally call this series like eye for an eye, but that's not exactly what we're doing. We're not going to be putting anything on my face. So if you're interested in the kind of content where someone's using the same stuff over and over again, or just, you know, being a little more critical of new releases, I would love to have you subscribe. Make sure you like this video before you leave it. And I'm also on patreon.com if you would like to support me there. The Makeup by Mario palette, I feel like there was a lot of hype around it. I really was excited about it. Let me break down a little bit about why I wanted it. I hadn't been inspired by any of Mario's releases up until this point. And so when this was released, I was like, ah, this, this feels like the Makeup by Mario release that I am very interested in. When you look at it, it's a rather boring palette, right? It's a lot of neutral browns, beiges, pinks. It's nothing really special about it. But in my makeup collection, a lot of the eyeshadow palettes I have don't curate to this, right? So this feels like something that I could easily take and easily use. And that's where I see the value in it. And that is why I purchased it. So the reason I'm not doing an eye for an eye on this palette is because those mattes are completely dupable. I don't think that we can like question that they are completely dupable. But we have these beautiful ethereal like topper shades that I'm more interested in looking at and looking at it at a larger scale in my collection. So there are these two shades or these three shades that have this beautiful just sheen to them, very sheer, what some might call a wet look. I also heard people say that they're not wet look, that's up to you, but I'm, I am I call them wet look. And they're just like these beautiful, beautiful shades. My favorite one being the middle one in particular. But when you swatch them out, some of them have a little bit of a base pigment to them, but they're really just catching the light and hitting it back on you. So when you top some of these mattes, you get a little bit of intrigue with it. And just like even after the swatch, it's just so juicy. Like everything about them is just wonderful. I know that I'm very attracted to these types of eyeshadows, so I know that I can find more in my collection. Now, to reiterate, this is my makeup collection and not your makeup collection, but if you were really solely interested in these three eyeshadows, I'm gonna go ahead and guess that there's probably an eyeshadow in your collection that can do what these can do. Maybe not as complex, but I'm not, I'm saying that very loosely, like not as interesting as this one, but you might have something that does something much more interesting and that might be much more your style. So what I'm going to do is really just show you a bunch of eyeshadows in my collection that I think are very similar. So we're gonna set aside the Ethereal Eyes palette and we're gonna introduce some other things. Do you, are you someone who has Pat McGrath palettes? If so, I'm happy to report to you that you probably have something very similar and perhaps the, the, the volume turned up version of these wet look shadows. This is the Mothership 5 Bronze Seduction. This shade right here has a bit of that wet look. Now, the particles in here are much chunkier and this would really be based on your application method, but on my finger, it looks really white, but whenever you blend it out, that white base kind of disappears and you're just left with the reflect of that green in there. And so like the Mario, it does very similar things to the Mario shades that we just looked at, but it does it with a little bit of a color shift, which is really, really cool. and can really enhance something that you're just using a lot of neutral shades on to just make it look cooler. Since we started with Pat McGrath, I'm just gonna run through some of my other Pat McGrath palettes, but it is typically this shade in the bottom right. Just like this shade in the top left is always like a highlight shade. These ones in the bottom right are typically like chunky, 
mica particles, beautiful wet shine. Now this one has more of a champagne sort of look to it. But just like the last shade, when you wipe it on your hand or when you blend it out, it just looks like a, a slick. It's so, so gorgeous. Just like the light hitting it. It's so beautiful. Let's take a look at another Pat McGrath. This is the Mothership one. Now, this is one of the astral pigments, and these are a lot drier and like less flaky than the two formulas that I just swatched for you, but it does kind of give a similar vibe. This one has a blue shift to it, so it's super, super fun. And then, just like the other ones, blend it out. It's, it's giving you that wet look, but it has that shift of blue. I'm gonna be honest with you, shades like this really kind of were mystifying to me until I started watching Hannah Louise Poston. I was not much of an eyeshadow layerer, layerer until I started watching Hannah's content, and I just saw her use shades like these. And speaking of Hannah Louise Poston, we're gonna, the gold palette's gonna come out. We're gonna see Sparks and Kava. Don't you worry, that's part of the process here. What I say to you, if you ever have a shade where you're like, that's really cool, but I don't know what to do with it because it has no base, put it on top of things. And I understand that most people know what an eyeshadow topper is, but I feel like I didn't really understand until I started using them. Like, try it with a really fluffy brush and just like sweep it on the eyes and then you'll just get like a very light sheen. Use your finger, put a heavy layer of it, then you get a lot more of the shift of whatever that wet look is. It's just a lot of fun to play with and I have just found that really learning and like playing with these and learning how to utilize shades like this have just like enhanced my eyeshadow experience so much. Like eyeshadow is not my bread and butter when it comes to makeup. Like I have a lot of eyeshadows because it once was. I'm not like shocked or surprised when I'm using eyeshadows anymore, right? Like there's not a lot going on where I'm like, oh, this wasn't like revolutionary formulas. That's not why I bought it. I was just like, I like that color story and I probably can make those shades work and I really hope the mattes blend. Yeah, I feel pretty good. It's like not often that an eyeshadow palette speaks to me, although I did just recently buy two. So if you need a refresh and you're not looking to buy new makeup, see if you have any shades like these that can just like transform a look. And I just think that these are so invaluable. This is the Mothership 3, and this is just like the blue one I just swatched for you, except it has a pink shift. This one's also much more subtle than the last one. I have a lot of motherships, I apologize. This one also has a little bit more of a gold leaning flake to it. So maybe not what some might consider a true wet look, but it's just, there's no base pigment to this. So when you swipe it out, you just get that beautiful, gorgeous, stunning wet look that like we are in search of in this video. There are so many palettes that have something like this and I just think they're like the unassuming potential hero to a palette because I do now when I'm using motherships, like almost always I end up using these bottom right hand shades to just like incorporate them into my look. This is the last mothership. This is another one that has a more like champagne-y rose gold look, but not as gold as the last shade that we just swatched. I'm feeling like just the world's happiest little elf here, just swatching these all for you. Like, damn, 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 damn. So I also have a couple of Natasha Denona shades. This is a self-made palette, but most of the shades in here are from the Coral palette, which is what this usually houses. But unlike the Pat McGrath ones and unlike the Makeup by Mario ones, this shade right here, does something very similar, but with like a purple red duochrome shift. But when you put it on, it's still so, so sheer. It just gives you that gorgeous wet look, but just like, like with a little bit more something something than maybe the Makeup by Mario or even some of the Pat McGrath ones we just swatched. Mm -mm -mm. While the Coral palette is like kind of an uninteresting, very heavy red story, every time I do a look with this palette or like well this palette or the original palette in here like I always end up smearing that all over the top because it takes it from like an 8 kind of look to like a 10 out of 10 kind of look. It's like 
you know, if you are someone who drinks and it's like you get a cocktail and they're like, would you like to add a floater for a dollar? Th these topper shades are like the floater. It's like, oh yes, I didn't know I wanted that. But now that you've offered it to me, I will take it. And I'm always gonna take something like this. I just recently was talking about this palette in my retro glam first impressions, but the shade Galaxia in here does something very similar. It has a little bit more base pigment in it, but it honestly still, it's still giving you that wet, that wet look. This has some different color sparkles in it. So there's like one that's like a slight blue shift in it, but still, mm, 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 mm. I remember like using this shade for the first time all over my lid and I was like, ah, this is something special. And I was using it and then I, then like, like I said, I started watching Hannah's content and she just started topping everything with it. And I was like, I want to do that. I want to put that on top of everything. It's perfect. It's amazing. It's gorgeous and stunning. The Metropolis palette even has one of these. Again, a lot of things are floating around, but this shade up here, well, it's really, really coppery. Again, it has really no base pigment to it. It's just like these gorgeous large flakes of copper. This one has, this one's a little bit more opaque than the other ones but still if you had anything underneath it you would still be able to see it and this would just really give it a kapow why are you so pretty why are you so stunning why are you all so gorgeous let's get into the two that really kind of originated the language which i know a lot of you follow me based because of Hannah Louise Poston or you have found me some other kind of way. But if you came to me from Hannah Louise Poston or you were also a watcher of Hannah Louise Poston, you are well, well acquainted with the, the gold palette, especially if you are familiar with Hannah's older content. And if you watch any of Hannah's content now, you will see these two shades just like so much pan almost gone. But when I think of wet look eyeshadows, these are the two that I really, really think of. So if you have the gold palette, you can, you're good. You like, you're good. Okay, because you have something very, very similar. And even this blue one, while it's more pigmented, much like the ones from the Metropolis palette, it's sheer. And so yeah, it's gonna give a tinge of blue but it's still gonna look really super, super shiny. We've shown some love to some major brands, but I also have some indie brands. If you have Club Nebula, you have something very similar to the Makeup by Mario ones, except you, you they all have like a beautiful shift to them. These all really perform as toppers to me. They add a little something something. Some of them look a little bit icier. Some of them have that pink. And I really like what Angelica did with this palette and like gave you all of those toppers because you can make this a shimmer. You can make this a shimmer just with the top and like, ugh. Angelica also has a shade that's kind of like a wet look shadow in here. It's the shade Double Sided. It's a lot smoother and the particle, the glitter particles aren't as present, but it's still very sheer and gives you that duochrome shifting wet look. I'm gonna be so covered in glitter after this video, but honestly, it's my happy place. I also have some single shades from Cleona. Now, Cleona does the textures of these types of shades a little bit differently, and some of them show up more opaque than the others, but I'll put the name of this particular type of formula from Cleona on the screen because I don't know it off the top of my head. I think they're called the Glimmers. I'm pretty sure they're called the Glimmers, but these are like everything I just showed you, but like times 70. I really am fond of this one because the chunks of whatever the shimmer particle is made of is so big and it just like really catches the light much harder than this one. So I really love that. Ooh. And this shade right here is like almost the toned down version. Like the, the particles aren't as large here. I mean, I've been known to throw these on the cheek too. Because I think that some people were talking about the Mario palette and they were like, oh yeah, like you can throw these on the cheek. And I was like, you could do that with like anything. I have one more eyeshadow palette that has some of these wet look shadows. This is the Isamea Industrial palette. And there are a couple shades in here that I feel like give you that wet look. This shade and this shade. Very sheer 
but give you that wet look. Now, I did say this in my review of the Isamaya palette. These two are a little bit confusing. You have all these other really, really intense textures going on around it. And these are just much softer. You can tell they're much softer than any of the other ones that I just swatched. And they're kind of getting lost in like the remnants of the other swatches. When you have like these big, large textures in here, I think that's like, I, I I have used these as singles, but I like not when I'm using the rest of the palette because the other the rest of the palette I feel like holds its own a little bit better and like these don't serve as much of a purpose in here just because there's like only like two ish matte ish shades in here so they don't really in my opinion like these are really hard to get to show up when you're battling all of these other more severe textures. When we're thinking about cheek products, I do have a couple products that I have in my collection that I feel like do this, which you can absolutely put on your eye, and I sometimes do. But the first thing I'm going to show you is actually a cream product, and it's the Westman Atelier Lit Up Highlight Stick. So if you were really looking for something like this in a cream formula, I think that this is going to be like the closest thing, well, of the things that I've tried, the closest thing that you can get, because this... Is really unassuming but it does I mean of course there is some creaminess in here but I don't find that this really stays too tacky throughout the day and then you just have like this beautiful wet look this would absolutely like mess up the integrity of an eyeshadow if you put it on top of it because it would work more like a an eye gloss at that point but if you were just doing it for photos so pretty but like also if you wanted this look on your cheek with a cream product, the Westman Atelier Lit Up Highlight Stick is gonna provide. I also have this old Twinkle palette from Tarte, and it's like actually one of my more prized possessions. Like I use the heck out of this. Like I use this a lot. The only thing that's important to remember about these is I typically, whenever I'm applying these and I wanna get that wet look, I use a brush that has very, very lightly packed bristled brushes so like like you know very few hairs in the bristles and when you just gently sweep it on your cheek ooh, it does it do it for you and so perhaps playing with different densities of brushes with some highlighters you already have you can find something very similar to what I've been able to achieve with the Mario palette if I had to recommend one all around that I probably pull out the most whenever I'm not using a palette that has this or I've made my own eyeshadow color story with my own singles and I didn't include one of those wet look shadows. It's this. This is the Fenty Beauty Diamond Bomb and I have the shade How Many Carrots but it comes in a couple different shades and this, well this is annoying and I've seen that this has happened to other people but let me get this open. Give me a second. Now hold on. Now, now hold on, it's this right here. And you can see that I've gone in with dirty fingers and dirty brushes because it is, it, it does look white, but whenever you swatch it, it is so, 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 so wet looking. And I throw this on the eyes all of the time. Like I said, whenever I feel like my eyeshadow look doesn't have like enough oomph to it, this gets pulled out because it's like, I know it's in a single compact. I know where to grab it from. Like, I know where it is in my collection. And I'm always, always just like throwing this on top of an eye look when, if I don't, if I'm just not satisfied. I also throw it on my cheek. And I think something to note is, you know, just like the other shades, if you are familiar with these types of like wet looking, there are chunks of glitter particle in here. But the wet look really, it's like when light hits it. So sometimes in person, you get this like glorious, it looks so super, super wet. But in like when you get up close, there are you can see all of the particles. I find that the more you like buff this into your cheek, if you are wearing it on your cheek, the the less glitter particle it looks and the more it stays wet looking. If you don't have something like any of the other things I've shown you in any of your eyeshadow palettes, but you were looking for just like a superstar to like pull out in cases that you need it. This is really it for me. Like I, I, I love all of those other shadows that I just showed you. I really do. But like this one really steals my heart. And like I have, when you're looking at this, it's like I have all those mats. I have Viseart shadows and I could like easily, easily take these mats. And I think what I just showed you also is that I easily, easily have a bunch of other wet look shadows in my collection that 
can do this. And I also have this that's so much easier for me to pull out because like if I want to use this shade, if I think about it and I'm using another palette and I didn't pull this palette out, I'm not going to reach for a whole palette to just use one shadow. I'm going to be like, oh yeah, I'll just use the Fenty Diamond Balm. So that's that with all of my wet looking eyeshadows. So if you were very tempted about by the makeup by Mario and you have other eyeshadows and you were really just in it for this ethereal topper nonsense, I'm, I'm going to say that you very likely have something like these in your collection already. And I'm sure you have these mattes. And I'm sure if you have a deeper complexion, you have mattes that work better for you than this palette might provide. Maybe the Ethereal Eyes palette isn't as all it's cracked up to be. Now, I still see a lot of value for this in my collection, and I'm going to talk that, about that in my final review of it. If the temptation was there and you're just like, I really can't reasonably pull the trigger for these three shades, yeah, that makes a lot of sense because there's a lot of other things that can do that. I do, I mean, I've said this already and it was said in my comments of my first impressions video of this, is that I think Mario should do away with the crystal eye topper things that he has in the collection and produce these as singles in, in, in lieu of those. Because those are kind of like the Fenty Diamond Balm, but not as good in my opinion, because I had one of those and I really, I like never used it. I know I'm reaching for this palette because I have just been loving playing with those. That ends the video. Thank you so much for watching. And if you are new here and you enjoyed today's video, I'm not often an overhead person whenever it comes to videos, but I do include like snippets of this kind of stuff in my videos a lot. But yeah, like I said at the beginning, if you are into the kind of content where someone's using a lot of their own collection or just showing you other alternatives, if you were excited to buy something, then this is a good home for you. And I would love to have you subscribe. Make sure you like this video before you leave it. And again, I'm on patreon.com if you would like to support me there. And remember to follow your hoat and you will find me. I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.